I wish I was a little stone. I wish I was, I was a little stone. stone. I'm sitting on a hill. I'm sitting, sitting on, on a hill. hill. I'm doing nothing all day long. Do, I'm doing, doing nothing, nothing all day long. long. I just a sitting still. I just, just a sitting still. still. I wouldn't eat. I, I wouldn't eat. eat. I wouldn't wash. I wouldn't wash. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even. even. I can't remember. I wouldn't even sleep. Sleep. I think. I just sit and sit a thousand years and rest myself, my gosh. I just sit and sit a thousand years and rest, my gosh. Rest myself, a gosh. Rest myself, a gosh. Okay. I went with more of um, kind of a poetic sense of going into it. And if you can see it, it'll make more sense. And I called my story Rendering, right? Back to Connections. And I said, it is proven we are all made of stars. Every atom was created from explosions and fusions of stars millions and billions of years ago. Re-rendered, piece by piece, we are stardust and we are starlight. And we are millions and billions of things. We are also human. Like the pitch black of the galaxy and the bright white of stars, like the tan of moons and like the red of Mars, we are complexity. Just like the stars that had to collide to make us, many things came together to make you. We are a mosaic of the people we've met, things we've seen, and the things we've felt. Every stone in a mosaic, whether galaxy black or star white, have come together to make you. Like the galaxy above and the stones below, I'm still rendering. Ooh, thank you. My piece is called Maintaining the Balance. As you can see, I used my finger to rub in the <laughs> Yes. graphite and make shadows even though uh, I'm no artist but today that changes <laughs> all right so my story uh, it might change your life so just be prepared every year high above the clouds there's a tug of war between light and dark between heaven and hell the team of heaven is small and weak and you'll see up there <laughs> hell's team is large and brawny the two teams must pull on the rope until one has crossed the line. Surrounding the teams are the gods of the clouds, watching the event and seeing which realm darker light will rule for the next year. And while Hell's team is stronger and more fit to win every year, Heaven's team has something Hell lacks. Courage. So when the war begins and the rope's tension tightens, Heaven's team won't budge. They hold and hold as the muscles of Hell tighten and strain, pulling the rope and in one swift movement, heaven strikes, yanking hell back into the shadows for the next year. Hi, KJ. Hi, KJ. <laughs> one, two, three, come on. Hi, Hi KJ. KJ. Yeah, and so my piece is named, I think, The Trap. And uh, essentially, I didn't really have enough time to cover like a full story, but my idea was that there was this guy named Cain, and basically he was leading his family through the desert, and he came across this unnatural, um, sort of structure in place and he was kind of curious to go explore it but when he went in into like you know with his family to explore it, it turns out it was the huge mouth of this monster that just swallowed his whole family. That was it. Again? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. That's Who it. swallowed what? No, so um, I'll start again. So there was this man named Cain and he was leading this family through the desert and he came across this unnatural sort of I guess you could say uh, structure, and out of curiosity, he decided to go explore it with his family. But it turns out he walked right into the trap of this giant, the map of this giant monster. Where is it? Just this. this oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's that's pretty much my story. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sadiha. Um, I'm from New York City. My piece is called. Excuse me, you need to say your name. Oh, say sorry. Your name. My name is Sabiha. I'm, I'm okay, from Sabiha. Ready? Get set, go. Hi, Hi. 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 I'm from New York City. Um, my piece is called The World Beyond Us. So I also did stars. Um, okay, yeah. So my story that I wrote was It is a tale as old as time. <clears throat> this is the story of two rocks um, lovers and a rock parent with their two rock kids looking at the stars. Stars are so far away that by the time we look at them, it has been 10,000 light years. They are a reminder of the past and of everything that connects us in this world. Um, the moon is unchanging. The rocks are unchanging. The question isn't when we look at stars, are they looking back? They've always been there. It's a tale as old as time. The end. The end. So mine 
is the story of the zebra and the apple. Let me show you guys my beautiful rendition. Uh, Wait a minute. Hi, Elia. Oh, uh, yeah, no. Everyone here probably knows my name. Hi. Eliyahu Suskin, also known as Elias, also known as Eli, also known as Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is my rendition. It's the zebra and the apple. So. Sorry. Okay. Tony the zebra had everything, had tried everything. From Kongolvang to Patsyu, he was on a quest to find the best flavors in the world. But alas, he hadn't found anything he'd be perfect yet. The French onion soup was just way too soggy, and the pumpernickel was just too crunchy. On a hill one day, he was very sadly moping about because of this. There are no new flavors for me to try. My life's work has been pointless. He screamed at the sky. However, a bug-bitten crab apple on the ground caught his eye. Out of desperation, he violently tore into this humble, forgotten fruit, and in that moment, his heart stopped. The flavor was perfect. The crisp tanginess paired with the good fruitiness and juiciness. And in that moment, Tony the Zebra was content. Hi, Corey. I'm from Massachusetts. Uh, what? Oh, North Hanover, Massachusetts. Um, so this is my picture. <clears throat> sort of like oh, rendition. Uh, sort of like an ice cream cone, and then this up here is a sun. <clears throat> All right. Here's my story. It's called uh, the Lost Cone. Uh, it's a little bit of a sad story, so I don't know. We can play it. I guess. Uh, here lies the story of Aaron. He once stood tall above all others who lived near him, although he was a greedy and selfish man. He knew nothing other than joy and happiness for all his life. After all, he's gotten everything he has ever wanted. Aaron had never faced a problem in his life. Therefore, he never felt the need to help anyone else. One day, he saw a little boy crying on a bench. He walked over, and as he got closer, noticed that this little boy had dropped his ice cream cone on the ground and could no longer eat it. Aaron laughed in his mind as he walked to the ice cream store nearby. After seeing this incident, it reminded Aaron that he was a bit hungry and could go for an ice cream. As he walked into the store, all thought of the little boy left his mind as he ordered his cone. Aaron, with his double scooped cone, walked out of the store and took his first bite. As his lips touched the cone, he was transformed into the ice cream and now became there, lying on the ground in the beating sun, left to melt. Aaron lie there for the rest of his life as a forgotten cone on the side of the street, forever forgotten. Hi everyone, I'm Christina. Uh, hi, hi, Christina. Christina. Um, I didn't do much shading on my rendition because if I did, I'd be here till 10 p.m. So, <laughs> see what you can see. If you can't, please come, come look at it later. Um, I didn't write a story because like Dominique, I saw of it as more of a poetic sense, more of a you look at it, and see what you see. So if you get the chance to come look at it, I think that poems are all interpreted in different ways, a different way to each person. So you can take the chance to look at it and think about what you see and what you feel. And when I was making this, that's how I felt is what I, I was putting, you know, my feelings on the ground, putting it out there. So that's what I like about this exercise. <laughs> Right. I was showing Sabiha, I was like, look from this angle and you can see it. So yeah. So there's That's like a mystery, share. there is something really special to see in there. <laughs> so, yes. That's what I have to share. Okay. And then you want to share one? I did. Well, more. But how can okay. you see this being used in the Um, yeah, it was just like... I think it's kind of mind-opening how with rocks and no words and being able to see it, you can generate all of these feelings because sometimes it's hard to express how you feel in words and like I was surprised to see how you can just do it with rocks and I think that's amazing. So. Hi Rowan! Hi, Rowan. Hi, Rowan. I'm from Shirley, Massachusetts. Um, I have created... What, what elementary school did you go to? 
What about Oakside? What school did you go to? Uh, Littleton High School. Yeah. And how about elementary? Elementary school? Uh -huh. I went to Laura White Elementary School. Yeah, because I used to supervise students. Oh. So maybe he can Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, so what I created is called the Circle of Life. A little louder. Please. What I created was called the Circle of Life. So once upon a time, there were four civilizations. The Della, as represented by the white, the Nulla, black, Mella, brown, and Yeratu, gray. They each were protected with the tasks of protecting their respective infinite stones. If their stones move out of the circle, the entire circle of life collapses and all civilizations will die. Although each civilization needed each other to live peacefully, they had a strong enmity for each other. They were all separated. Despite eating, breathing, and living the same, each civilization would stay away from each other, and marriage was only allowed within their own civilization. This circle of life lasted millions of years without any disruption. And then one day, Makkah of Mela and Tana of Tela fell in love. Their entire world turned upside down once they were told by their communities that they were not allowed this. A war was initiated by Mela after refusal from uh, Mecca of Mela. Nulla called for a circle of life meeting, explaining a war would destroy the circle of life. Mella narrow-mindedly agreed. Mella narrow-mindedly ignored Nulla and continued the war. The fight was over and the circle of life was destroyed. One day it will be reborn. Hi, Nats. Hi, Nats. Um, I'm from London. Oh, and <laughs> um, I was trying to rack my brain coming up with this story, but it just it wasn't it wasn't coming. So. Um, it's more of just kind of like a concept. I titled it Fate, and it's just about like the different journeys that everyone's on, but you end up, I don't want to say in the same place, because that sounds like it's about death, and it's not. But you'll always end up like in your happy place. No matter how hard the journey, you'll end up in your happy place. So are those one, two, three, four, five people? Mm -hmm. And they're going on their journeys? Yeah. And then what makes it go up high? Um, it was just to individualize them, just to like make them different. The colors are so pretty. And then what's in the middle? It's this book? Um, it's just like the, the joy, the happiness. Oh, so they're going in? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Um, it made me feel really calm. Um, I, I re think I really needed this, especially with like exam stress. It just, I was able to forget about everything and just focus on the stones, and it was really nice. And just really in the present. Yeah. Hi, Zach. Hi, Zach. I'm from South Jersey. Um, and I was originally going to do like. I don't know, something super mystical and poetic, and I was just sitting here, and I just could not, I couldn't think of anything. I, I came from the library, and my brain's pretty fried. So I ended up just like making a table, and then I realized there were enough seats to make like six seats, and then enough stones to make players at the table, so and I just made a poker table. And then... Um, poker table? Yeah, this is a poker table. <laughs> um, and then I figured I would just like, for my story, it's not really a story, it's just like, a hand rendition of one time when I played. Um, I, I made good money on this hand, but these these values are like, I, I multiplied them by a lot just so like this story would make more sense. So the story, the, the title's called All In. <laughs> um, so in this story, we're playing with $50, $100 blinds, so it's $100 to play basically, right? We're dealt nine eight of spades, so it's, all right, hand. Uh, we open with a bet of 200, and our opponent calls. The flop comes, six of diamonds, seven of spades, 10 of hearts. So we flop the best possible hand. We have a straight, and there's no flush draw out there, so looking pretty good right now. Um, we decide to check the best hand here and set the trap on our opponent, hoping he bets a lot. Um, he comes out and bets 400. No, he comes out, no, the pot's the pot is 400, sorry. The pot's 400 at this point when we check, and he bets 2,000, which is five times the pot. Um, so that's a lot. But we called, hoping he had an overpair or something. I don't really know. I still think we're good here, basically. Um, we're just hoping the board doesn't pair, which would give him a full house, and then we would lose. 
Um, the turn comes to the two clubs, which is a good and a safe card for us. There's no flush draws, and then the board's still unpaired. The pot's 4400 bucks, and our opponent bets 4400 bucks. Uh, we call, and then the river is the ace of spades. And then we check one last time, and then he goes all in, and then we call, and then we won. That, that's my story. Who's born? 